Hey everybody on YouTube, welcome back to Broadway Upholstery School and please, we're just going to say it right up front, please subscribe because I am really uh, going to show you some tips on this one that might save you a lot of time and aggravation if you're going to be upholstering especially professionally. So this chair here is uh, an, an interesting project because it came to me smoke filled and the customer didn't want any of the original stuffing at all and so we stripped them down to the frame and I've got it built up to the eight-way tie coil spring and you've seen up my other videos you can see how we do that but I really want to talk to you about um, the particular um, customers you know they don't have a budget to go all the way with this like uh, to use horsehair is what I'd like to do to use stuff this out all with horsehair not using the poly polyurethane that I'm about to show you so but I do have some horsehair some new horsehair left over from another job that I want to skim out and I'll show you what I mean by that but I what I'm trying to uh, I guess demonstrate in this YouTube video um, on the seat especially is that um, what most people would do I mean these are the original springs uh, I think what most upholsters would do out there and I, um, I'm just guessing here is that they wouldn't bother your hand tying the springs back if they know that they, they're going to put polyurethane on I think what they're going to do is web the top of this and then just slap this this on and that will be it you know uh, to me um, unless unless you and your customer have talked about it and you're charging them less money um, I think that's fine but I wouldn't I probably wouldn't do that I probably would talk to my customer and spending a little bit more money on doing the eight-way tile coil springs which I did and, and then trying to save money on the batting so if we tried to horse if we tried to use all horse hair on this you would be surprised at how much horse hair it would be. Um, it would probably be about four or five hundred dollars. So um, it's much cheaper uh, to do the polyurethane, but that doesn't mean you have to be cheap about how it's done. Okay? So, so far, I don't have a lot in this. The webbing uh, that was used on the bottom would have been used on the top. The springs were the only thing in the original that I could save other than the frame. Uh, they were in really good shape and they don't smell. <laughs> And so my next thing I'm going to show you is the burlap. You've seen that. I'm going to put the burlap on. I think this is an interesting project for people uh, to see um, how sometimes we try to work with budgets, within budgets in upholstery. I mean, we don't, if we just had an unlimited budget on all the products here, you would see, ho you would see piles of brand new horse hair in here, which is very expensive. Because that's, believe me, of all the batting, and we're talking batting, we're talking, uh, when we talk batting, we're talking uh, foam is a batting, cotton is a batting, Dacron is a batting, horsehair is a batting, hay is a batting, nightgowns, <laughs> anything is a batting, anything of substance, that qualifies as a batting. Um, so, but, but, you know, what is the best batting, or what is the best combination of batting to use for the budget that the customer has? And so that's what this project's all about, the best budget. Uh, the best thing we can do with the budget that we're working with, okay? So what I'm going to do now is the burlap, okay? The burlap we're going to use. We're going to staple it on the back first. And we're, on burlap we staple, if you see my other videos, we staple um, over, not under. It's, it's, it's better that way. It's stronger. I'm just going to fold it up. So you're going to see this right from the springs up. You won't believe how comfortable this, this is going to be. So my goal is to make it comfortable, to make it look really like it's stuffed out with horse hair, like a real crown, a nice crown. That's what we're looking for. And I want it to last a long time. Those are my goals. They, it needs to last. I, I have to feel good about it, that what I'm doing is going to last without creasing or falling apart or anything like that. I'm talking about the fabric. Um, I want it to last 100 years, believe it or not. Okay, so I'm going to stretch. I'm not folding and stapling to the front. I'm stretching to the front. By the way, it's a very important step. Every step is a building step. This is important. You want to stretch. You don't want to fold and, and staple like you did the back because you don't get the proper stretch. So one side gets stapled, the other side gets stretched and then folded. Okay? So stretch, 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 and you staple, staple, staple. Right? <laughs> Maybe not in that order. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the back pieces. There is an order to that. You want to cut the back. I'm going to hold this up to see, for you guys to see. 
okay? I'm going to cut this post. There's a double post back here. Great practice for when you're doing your fabric, by the way, on your burlap. So what I'm going to do is show you. I'm right-handed. I'm going to try to stand over here. I'm going to cut this back post first. I'm going to cut to the center, and then I'm going to go off that V cut that I've shown you in other videos. And then I'm going to I'm going to make the same try to make the same group of cuts on the other post. Going to the center of the post, and then I'm making that V over there. So this is really good practice because if I if you mess up on this, it matters nothing. It really doesn't. But it's nice to have this little piece flap come through here for your burlap. And we did a pretty good job. So we're going to stretch that and staple. Staple that down. And then we're going to staple this down. We're going to cut this and fold this. Staple it. And then I'm going to get one staple on the side. And then I'm going to cut the other side. The other groups. Okay? I'm just going to stand in front of the camera now because you guys have already seen what I did over there, right? I'm just going to do some quick cutting. Probably as a beginner, that shouldn't be in your, in, in your repertoire, quick cutting. A lot of people like to slow down on the cut. I don't blame you, especially if you're doing an expensive fabric, right? that all secure. Now I can finish, now that that part's secured, I can finish stretching a little bit to the end, ends up here, and then I'm ready for my next series of cuts along this big arm here. I say a big arm, it's got a really wide post, it's a little unusual. There's really nothing to tuck through, which makes it a little challenging on the fabric, but okay, so we're going to cut this, and by the way, I just want to tell you right now, I don't know if we're going to be going any further on this chair in a YouTube video because the customer needs the chair. <laughs> I think what I want to try to do is just show you the most important part of the chair, by far, is the seat. Okay? Because that's where all the weight of the body goes. So I just cut to the, my right, and I think that's all I need is one cut there. I'll show you why. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to trim this up a little bit. Well, we do need a trim cut, but not a cut around the post. And we're going to fold this. Believe it or not, I'm going to fold that under. I'm going to pull it forward. And then I'm going to finish on this side. I'm going to turn the chair to show you. This is my, my side that I'm going to fold over and staple. Turn this around. Now the reason that I, I put a cut under over here, you might be wondering, you just said burlap shouldn't be done that way. Well, I got a nice even edge. I'm going to try to get a couple of staples in here underneath the finished wood. And I think what that will do, because there's no place to pull through, is just give me a smoother edge on the front, even though I have a lot of material going on there. So now I'm going to I'm going to cut this side, just one side here, to this post. I'm going to trim this up. And watch what I do over here. I'm stretching. I have to stretch this. The hand stretch. Not don't use your webbing stretcher for this. Hand stretch. And staple. And cut this. Fold this over, staple it down, I got this cut like so, I'm going to get this, try to pull it as tight as I'm stapling, and now I'm already in the front, I'm going to trim the front just a little bit, I'm going to fold this over, this down. My next step. Okay, so if you were doing horse hair, you would be doing a, a bigger roll, edge roll in the front and a double edge roll in the front. You'd be hand stitching it. And if you sign up for the class, um, the first class that we had, which is available, um, we show you how to do this stitch work. Um, a double roll of stitching. Um, I mean, a double roll of edge roll and then the, the hand stitching, a couple of uh, things of hand stitching that we do are demonstrated by a student. So if you want to take a look at that, that's great. So remember, that's Broadway Upholstery School online classes. We're, we're just starting, we're new to this game with the, we have all the equipment, we have all the IT people, we have a great group of people working behind the scenes. 
And uh, that doesn't mean that everything's perfect yet, but we're, we're getting there. And we think we have a good product, so don't forget to sign up and subscribe, please. I'm going to take this. This The idea here with this edge roll, this is a medium-sized edge roll. So we're not doing a horse, we're not doing a horse hair, so we've selected a medium-sized edge roll, and you'll see why in a minute you know, with the next step. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to staple this down with just being a little bit over the edge here. About every two inches. And then I'm going to come to the front and grab a couple of staples, especially at the end. I'm just going to, and I'm going to get a couple more here. What this does, is I'm pinching the front of this and I'm trying, and I'm angling my gun like so. Okay, you can tuck this in, this little piece of uh, twine that came out. That's from the spring. And then this tightens it up even more. And I like that. What you want, what your goal here in this roll, very important, listen to this. You don't want any, you don't want much play or any play on this roll. That this play on the roll is going to go right up to the fabric and wear the fabric down. So our, our goal is to build this, like I said, we're trying to build this to last a hundred years or three or four upholsterings. You know, every upholsterer that's going to be doing this, just a reupholster, would say, whoa, this is a good shape. I don't need to tear the springs out. And at the second, definitely. The third, yes. And even maybe a fourth upholstering over, over 100 years. I don't think I'll be around at that point, but you're talking a long time in the future. Uh, so we got this. Now our next step is to put a light, I'm going to skim this out with a little bit of, of horse hair. Okay, that, that extra horse hair that I got. I'm sure my customer is going to love this. Now I'm going to explain to you horse hair. Why is it the best batting that you can get? The reason is horse hair, every little hair is like a little mini spring. And it does hardly ever lose its con that consistency, that, that quality that it has. Okay, I should hold it up to the camera. Look at that. Those are little little hairs that come from the body of the horse, not not the not the tail or the mane. But that's that's what provides you. Each one of those is like a little mini spring. So what I'm trying to do with the foam that I'm going to be putting on is try to work this together with the foam, and you'll see. Uh, unfortunately, not every one of you can come in and sit on this to see, but after it's done, I assure you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel good, and I'll let you know if it isn't. So what I'm doing is I'm picking the horse here that comes a little clumpy, right? And, and one, one at a time, I'm going to put this, I'm really picking, I can really pick really fast, and we're going to put one roll, one at a time, we're putting our horse hair, uh, one fistful at a time, and then at the same time, I'm, with my fingers, I'm meshing this together so it becomes one. And then when we're all done, it's all one, one layer. It actually, th that's another quality that this horse hair has. It has a great quality of meshing, meshing together. Okay, so at this point, if um, we were doing an all horse hair seat, uh, I have one layer on this, um, but you would probably end up with at least probably five or six layers of horse hair, and that's a lot of horse hair, and I don't have any, any more extra horse hair. It's very expensive um, and prohibitive in most cases. That's why I, I try to save as much horse hair as I can, or the original cake, as we say. Everything, involved, everything that you see here is called a cake. So in most pieces, most antiques that come with me, I can save some of that. <coughs> That's what I usually discuss with the client, what we're going to do. And if they don't like the idea of that, and some people don't, then we have, to, we have to have the other discussion, which is, okay, what do we do if you don't want the, the full treatment? That's called the full treatment. So, so I think we got a great um, treatment that's going to really, I, I think, impress the customers. And, and the whole thing is about seating, too, you know, and look, aesthetics, and seating. So, so what I got here is a three-inch piece of foam. Then I'm going to put over the horse hair, which, by the way, I don't have to hand stitch. If you were if you were doing an all horse hair uh, seat, you would be hand stitching this front this this st to stabilize. But the foam itself will stabilize it, so it's not a problem. That's one of the good things. I was an assortment of curved needles, and then and then in all the other preceding layers, I like to hand stitch with bigger. I get bigger needles as bigger curved needles as I go along. So I, I simply have cut this three-inch foam with the with the cutouts on the back, you know, a little round, little round on the back, nothing fancy. And then I'm going to lay it in here like so, right at the edge. And then I'm going to push this down into the reels, okay? Under, I'm going to try to get under the reels, but I don't want to be. I want to show you this. <coughs> I don't want the foam. Excuse me. I don't want the foam near my, my reels here. As much as I can, I, I want them back because I need to staple a tack in here, okay? 
So what I did is, and the reels, these reels are what's going to hold the foam in the back. And then when our fabric goes on, I'm going to be putting Dacron on too. But when our fabric goes on, that will hold it in place also. So now you have to do the front. Front's very important. You have to secure the front. So watch what I do. I'm taking my thumbs, I'm pulling down, and I'm going to get a staple behind this edge roll. Okay? So I didn't use a heavier edge roll because I would never be able to get these staples in. So what I'm actually doing is I'm skimming and I'm stapling just the top part of the foam, which is probably about an inch, because even my big staples would not go through the whole thing, you no, know, right through the three inches. So that's why my thumbs are pulling it down and I'm stapling. Okay, those didn't catch, so I have to go back. So sometimes we take cardboard tack tape to secure this, but I don't think this requires it because these staples went in pretty good. Okay, you can almost see, look at that. I mean, even already you've seen the crown, a beautiful crown, um, that we just really established that crown with just the, the foam and pulling it underneath the rails. And also what's really pronouncing that crown are the springs. Now, if it were just the webbing on the top, this would appear much flatter. So the springs are providing this crown, the base, it's the, the very base, okay? So now that we have that secure, we're going to take a little piece of cotton. So look at the combination I'm using of materials here. Um, different, different combination of materials. So what, what this is, it's a little gully that's created by the staple work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of tuck that, I'm going to try to probably double the layer up and kind of tuck it in. You'll see my next step is going to help me keep that in. It usually stays really put there. Because some people glue this. I don't think it's necessary to glue this because it tucks in pretty well and you'll see the next step why why it's fine. So if you don't if you don't put this piece in, you have a gully in there. You might not have it right away. You might even have it a year or two down the road, but it will start to appear, and we don't want that. So that, that's really nice. When I push my hand in here, I feel a nice transition between the foam, the cotton, the edge roll, and the wood. It's a beautiful transition, meaning that I don't feel a gully, okay? And I don't feel anything abnormal in there. So I'm going to grab another piece of, uh, now we're going to grab our Dacron, which Dacron actually takes the place of muslin and cotton. Does that make sense? because it's actually giving you, allowing you to pull a little bit, like the muslin would, but it's also a batting. Muslin's not a batting. Muslin, muslin is just muslin. But Dacron is, a, it, it serves both purposes. That's why I like Dacron in certain, in certain parts. You have a choice of putting cotton, but if you put cotton, it's not gonna take, it's not gonna secure this part. So you see, everything leads to the other, you know, every, every material leads to the other material. And, it has to make sense and it has to, I guess, experience. And I guess these YouTube videos, for anybody not with experience, that's why they're invaluable. And that's, I'm gonna push the, I'm gonna push the school again, Broadway Upholstery School. We're showing uh, students and they're asking all those questions to me that sometimes I forget. On these, on these videos, they would be asking more questions I know and I would be answering. Well, we're doing that live and then we're offering that live Q&A every, every Friday for people who are members. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to tuck the Dacron in the back, just I don't know where the foam is for now. I'm going to do a little trimming. Sometimes you could trim with your hand this stuff if you, if you trim it the right way. It doesn't, on the other side, if I went the other way, it wouldn't trim. But you can use your scissors, if you're not sure. Okay, I'm just going to trim up a little bit over here. And this is going to tuck under those rails, those rails, just like the, the foam did. I'm just going to tuck underneath there, tuck there. Okay. Now, I want to flip this up to show you. you we have a nice, generous uh, tacking rail in here. Sometimes you don't have this, w this wide of a rail. But I see people, they all go all the way to the finish. Don't go all the way to the finish with your nails. This one tip alone will save you a lot of aggravation. Try to be halfway on that wood reel so that you leave 
the bottom part of that reel open for your fabric. Now I'm going to pull this. Now this only has a certain tension to pull, so I'm also going to try to help it along like so. If you pull this too much, in other words, it will rip. That's why I'm going to kind of help it along here. I'm using a high density quality foam that's, that has stood the test of time, been around a while. And I'm trimming this up so that you can still see that line, that's at the next tack line. And guess what? That's it. This is what we call a nice French balloon seat, which is what, what the customer desired. So there you have it. We'll see you next time.